At the distant edge of Russia, amidst the jagged ice of the Arctic, a deserted island lies hidden. Few are aware of its existence, let alone having set foot there. This island, akin to a biblical ark, has gathered within its bounds all the denizens of the Arctic, safeguarding them from the ravages of civilization. Gaining access to this island is a formidable challenge, although in the past, it fell under the influence of human expansion. Yet, those somber days have passed, and destiny has preserved the island, enshrouding its entirety within a sanctuary. I've known Sergei Gorshkov for many years, and have always observed his work with fascination, marveling at his skill, determination, and resourcefulness. This time, he has thrown down the gauntlet to an enigmatic island, venturing into its very heart. И вот я снова в Арктике. Моя задача – фотографиях отразить всю необычную и суровую жизнь ледового мира. Белый медведь – крупнейший в мире сухопутный хищник. И чаще всего он охотится на льду. Его выживание зависит от наличия льда и добычи на нем. Но лед тает, и уже, возможно, через несколько десятилетий льда не будет вообще. Что будет с белыми медведями – не знает никто. Трудно себе представить, что где-то там, на большой земле, люди едят арбузы и купаются в море. Здесь у нас тоже море, но оно другое. Сейчас оно полностью покрыто льдом. И мой путь лежит на остров Рангеля. Последние годы именно туда я стремлюсь. Мне нравится этот замороженный остров. Я люблю этот замороженный рай. Прямо по курсу вон там, остров Рангеля. Но чтобы попасть на него, нам нужно пробиться через этот массив льда. Интересно, сейчас впереди. Сумеем ли мы пробить эту стену? Второй день мы пытаемся пробиться к острову Рангеля. Я очень боюсь, что лед плотным кольцом окружил остров. И тогда мы не сможем пройти остров. И самое страшное что если мы не сможем высадиться на остров Рангеля, и тогда я буду вынужден вернуться обратно с пустыми руками. Я слишком долго ждал этой встречи с загадочным и суровым островом Рангеля. Существующий стандартный образ Арктики – белый медведь, бредущий по торосам, а следом песец – всегда бодоражили мое воображение. И именно за этой мечтой я приехал сюда, на остров Рангеля. Другими словами, я бы его назвал «замороженный рай». Пытаемся разломать лед. Нифига не получается. Зад, вперед, зад, вперед. Я думал, у нас ледокол. У нас резиновая лодка. Пробуем еще раз. Поехали наверх. С разгончику, с разгончику. Давай, 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 давай. Не получается у нас, не получается. Вот оно, ледокольное судно, которое ведет нас строго на север. Царство белых медведей. Пошла, 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 пошла. А сейчас отсюда вынурут нарвалы. В этом году очень сложная ледовая обстановка. Как говорят, сторожил острова Рангеля, такого они не видели уже давно. Вокруг острова Рангеля сплошные льды, и мы, маневрируя, пытаемся пробиться к берегу. Здесь вот мы нашли более-менее подходящее, скажем так, окно, и сейчас будем высаживаться на берег.
Ну что, Петрович, откуда начнем наше путешествие? Путешествие уже началось. Уже началось? Да. Первое, наверное, неожиданное будет. Там. Посмотрим. Никогда не знаешь, что будет за следующим углом. Throughout the island, there exists a network of outposts where the reserve staff operates seasonally. However, maintaining the integrity of the lodgings here is a formidable challenge. The cabins always attract the keen interest of polar bears, and there are hundreds of them here, which is why this island is also known as the maternity ward of polar bears. Притомились уже окна вставлять. Чего им там надо? Это от медведей такие, да? Тросомахи, медведи. Покажи, какие сюда. Ну, это так. То есть они лапами туда, да? И... Ну, наверное. Ну, сейчас сделали такие вот мощные решетки. И ни один зверь уже не сможет сломать ее и залезть. An old Russian tradition. How can one not raise a glass to the local spirit and to future endeavors? Сахар белая смерть. Не знаю. Девчонки лучше. Ну их нету. Подсласти им жизнь сахар. Здесь с Васи то надо было лодочку на доли. Нас был туда под, под занос. Или даже на западный базар попасть, а там. Wrangell Island is named after the Russian explorer Ferdinand Wrangell. Since 1976, the island has been designated as a nature reserve and is listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. In reality, the island isn't quite small, about 70 kilometers in width and 150 kilometers in length. Within this patch of land lie mountains, rivers and lakes. Here, a true northern haven for wildlife unfolds, though much of it remains frozen for a significant part of the year. Warmth arrives late in these parts, which means ice can persist around the island until August. The island itself is quite sizable, making it a challenging and hazardous feat to traverse on foot. Moving around is most convenient on a quad bike, but one must stick to riverbeds and gravelly terrain to avoid disturbing the delicate vegetation. We will commence our journey from the Mamontovaya River. The name's origin becomes evident at once, Mammoth River. On the island, remnants of Pleistocene creatures that once roamed here are constantly discovered. Woolly rhinoceroses, musk oxen, wild horses, Arctic reindeer, primitive bison, and of course mammoths. Their tusks and teeth are abundantly scattered along the riverbeds and protrude from the cliff faces and soil. The most recent and sensational discovery on Wrangell Island is also linked to mammoths. Previously, scientists believed that the last mammoths in Siberia went extinct 9,500 years ago. However, it turned out that the island's mammoths survived their mainland counterparts by 7,000 years, eventually perishing just short of our era. Петрович говорит, что это челюсть, а я говорю, что это попа. Кита. 
А это? Пивень. А это от хита говоришь? От хита череп. Я говорю, что это от мамонта попа. Ну ладно. Ладно, главное, что они есть. Judging by the remains, the island's mammoths were roughly half the size of their mainland counterparts. Perhaps this smaller stature allowed them to survive longer, as they required less food, and adapting a smaller body to changing climates was easier. However, there's another perspective held by scientists. The extinction of the last mammoths on the island, just prior to our era, coincided with the arrival of humans in the region. Scientists believe that only around 300 individuals inhabited the area, a population ancient hunters could have easily decimated. For a naturalist scientist, Wrangell Island is, without exaggeration, a true treasure trove. Amongst other Arctic territories, there's none that can rival Wrangell Island in terms of the diversity of plant and animal species. Wrangell Island serves as a maternity ward not only for polar bears, but also for several other mammals and birds. And what about the sole large colony of white geese in the Tundravaya River Valley, a phenomenon unique in Eurasia? We'll venture there as well and witness true action in the wild, orchestrated by the Arctic foxes every spring. Like polar bears, snowy owls adorn Wrangell Island, as well as the entire north. These birds thrive amidst the white snows and are well adapted to the harsh weather conditions. The density of white owl nests here is much higher than in other northern regions. In nature, owl reproduction primarily hinges on the abundance of rodents, mice and lemmings. Yet, on Wrangell Island, snowy owls, like lemming-dependent arctic foxes, can sustain themselves through the substantial number of nesting birds. As a result, they reproduce well even during years of low lemming populations. During bumper crop years for lemmings, the density of owl nests can reach up to three per square kilometer, and fox dens can number 20 or more per 100 square kilometers. Therefore, this island offers the most opportune location for capturing remarkable photographs. When you spend a long time working in close proximity to wild animals, there comes a moment when the animals start showing interest in what's happening around them. The most curious and persistent among them are arctic foxes. They lose their fear and even start misbehaving, stealing what's poorly secured, venturing into tents or cabins. Sergei shared an amusing story. Once, I sat near an arctic fox den for a long time, observing the family's life without showing any activity. The female kept watching me for a while. Her nerves got the better of her, and she began to show interest in me. Slowly, she started approaching. She was intrigued by the camera on the tripod. The female came up to the camera, sniffed it, glanced at the lens, and then moved away. Following her, a bolder male approached. He also sniffed the camera, lifted his leg, and marked his territory. That's the difference between males and females. And here it is, the helmsman of the tundra. Lemmings, those adorable creatures, bear a resemblance to hamsters. They're quite swift, and capturing them is a challenge. However, owls and foxes are skillful masters, and procuring a lemming is no trouble for them. It's truly hard to imagine how many of these hamster-like creatures one would need to catch to feed a family of voracious foxes, especially once the young ones have grown. You wouldn't envy the parents. They have no time for rest, having to spend entire days on their feet traversing the tundra. However, Wrangell Island hosts the largest population of polar bears in the Arctic. Here, Scientists estimate around 400 maternal dens are established each year. The island's seclusion and the ice-covered surroundings contribute to such a profusion of dens. Мы с Блоссом когда-то он был самым знаковым местом острова Врангеля. Еще пару десятков лет назад 
во время осенних миграций здесь собиралось огромное количество моржей. Сторожилы говорят, что их было по несколько тысяч. К моржам приходили белые медведи. Их тоже собиралось здесь до сотни штук. И здесь начиналась битва гигантов. Я представляю, это было великое зрелище. Но все жизнь меняется. Теперь этот пляж довольно пустынный. Я был здесь несколько раз в разное время года, но никогда ничего я здесь не видел. Сейчас основная масса моржей выходит на другой части острова, так называемый мыс Уэринг. Вот туда мы сейчас и держим путь, в надежде увидеть моржей и белых медведей. Этот медведь пытался пролезть в домик. Он постепенно разрывает, разрывает. И если сейчас так оставить, то я уверен, что медведь до конца сломает ее и залезет туда. Поэтому перед отъездом нам нужно будет чем-то ее заделать, чтобы у нее не было соблазна ковырять и ломать дальше. Мы приедем сюда специально на Новый год, повесим новогодние игрушки и зажжем звезду. Колючие проловки – это тоже одно из средств защиты от медведя, потому что зимой, когда наметает сугроб, медведи залазят наверх, разламывают крышу и проникают вовнутрь. Еще не было такого года, чтобы медведи туда не залазили. Ну вот мы покидаем мыс Уэринг. В этом году нас преследует полоса неудач. Сплошной лед, моржи не вышли, медведи тоже не пришли. И туман. Три дня не выпускает нас из балка, поэтому мы вынуждены покинуть и ехать дальше в поисках продолжения наших приключений. Когда мы уезжаем, мы двери закрываем вот такими засовами. Вот так как несколько в ряд ставим, но и все равно медведь пытается проникнуть. Все вот искорябано, изломано. Когда медведь залез сюда, здесь был полный бардак. Это сейчас маленько освежили, а так здесь была гора мусора. Но дай бог, мы сможем все это убрать и будет чисто. Находясь здесь, в самом медвежьем месте острова Врангеля, на мысе Рейн, приходится думать о безопасности. Каждую ночь мы занимаем круговую оборону, заваливаем наши Хонды. Здесь просто нет гаражей, мы вынуждены заваливать Хонды всяким мусором, чтобы, если вдруг полезет медведь и начнет попытается их угнать, мы услышим и попытаемся ночью отогнать его. Но сегодня это не произошло, слава Богу. These planet's largest predators permanently inhabit the island. You can especially spot a high number of bears along the coastline at the end of summer and in autumn, when the Chukchi Sea becomes completely ice-free. During this period, bears usually congregate on the sea-facing capes and spits, where walrus haulouts are situated. And on the island, there are the largest walrus haulouts in Russia, with populations reaching up to 100,000 individuals. Sergei has visited Wrangell Island six times. His shortest expedition lasted three weeks, while his longest stretched to two months. Sergei recalls, I chose the times when something was happening on the island and flew in. My goal was to showcase the entire cycle of nature's life. After all, Bears construct their dens at one time, geese arrive at another, the ice retreats in a third, and it's best to observe walruses in the fourth. That's why I had to keep shuttling between home and the island. At the end of summer, as the ice recedes, grey whales appear off the shores of Wrangell Island. Starting from 1990, during the open sea seasons, Feeding grey whales can be observed along the entire coastline of Wrangell Island. Реально нам сильно повезло. Мы нашли кита, и на ките 
сразу несколько белых медведей. Сейчас попробуем их поснимать, но не знаю, ветер дует в их сторону. Нас будет обходить по ветру, чтобы полностью модифицировать. А дальше будем действовать по ситуации. Наверное, надо, они что-то оборзели. Throughout the year, bears hunt on the ice around the islands. Starting from August, when the ice disappears, a multitude of bears of all ages, including males and females, solitary individuals, and family groups, mothers with cubs, approach the island's shores. The island serves as a sanctuary for bears, where they spend the open sea period on land. With the disappearance of drifting Arctic ice due to global warming, the significance of the island in the lives of bears has significantly increased. In the year 2004, the Wrangell Island Reserve was granted the status of a UNESCO World Natural Heritage Site. This nomination was granted based on two criteria that align with this status. As a territory that preserves the traces of unique evolutionary processes, resulting in a natural complex formed in a way that is unparalleled anywhere in the world. And as a territory possessing unique biodiversity within its natural zone, with a special focus on the polar bear, an Arctic red list species, holding a significant place. Вот эта картина Арктики, о которой я мечтал. Три медведя едят мертвого кита, сзади сидят снежные гуси. Это только здесь, на острове Врангеля, можно увидеть такую красоту. С одной стороны, кажется, сурово и жестоко, но на самом деле это суровая красота Африки. Арктики, вернее. Африка вспоминает мне что-то. Врангел Айленд remarkably beautiful. However, its exquisite beauty is often concealed for long periods by dense fogs, chilling cold of prolonged Arctic storms, the searing bite of winter blizzards, the extended twilight of autumn, and the darkness of polar nights. The island doesn't reveal itself fully upon first encounter. To truly grasp its essence, one must open their soul to it, immerse themselves in its world with love, respect for its nature and inhabitants. Only then will the island respond and unveil its vast expanses. In 1975, 40 muskoxen were introduced to Wrangell Island from Alaska, where they thrived and adapted remarkably well to their new environment. Prior to this, they were not present here. According to paleontological data, muskoxen and the northern deer inhabited the island during the late Pleistocene, but like mammoths, they were evidently displaced by humans. Today, the island is home to around 800 muskoxen and a small herd of northern deer, which were also brought here during the Soviet era. Muskoxen and deer rarely venture to the coastline, preferring the island's interior expanses. They avoid encounters with polar bears, allocating habitat spaces amongst themselves, the coastline and the island's interior territory. Как быки там дрались, бубум, 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 и все ради того, чтобы потратиться. Дурные. Петрович, ты тоже таким молодым был? Не. Че, не гонял? Никогда не дрался. Пацанов не гонял? 
Не. А девчонок юбки задирал? Не важно. In the second half of May, around 150,000 white geese returned to the island from North America, specifically California. This is one of the most numerous goose species in the world, but in Asia, they nest primarily on Wrangell Island. The establishment of the nature reserve was closely linked to the need to protect this unique nesting colony. Geese are rather skittish birds, they fly away as soon as they notice a human from afar. However, when it comes to protecting their offspring, they are unmatched in battle. During the nesting period, Arctic foxes come to the colony to feast on eggs or chicks. This is where the real showdown begins. Fearless geese rush at the foxes and drive them away from their nests. But the foxes work in pairs and simultaneously. While one distracts, the other gathers the prey. That's what it seemed like to me. But in reality, the foxes use a different tactic. They first attack the female, driving her away from the nest. And in that moment, when she leaves the nest to defend it, they steal the eggs or chicks. The foxes are cleverer and more agile, managing to dodge the bites, and besides, the bite isn't painful enough for them to give up such a delicacy. When arriving on the island, the geese are under tight time constraints during the short Arctic summer. They are practically compelled to begin nesting almost immediately, so that the chicks have time to strengthen and learn to fly before the onset of colder weather. During the summer, 170 species of birds arrive on the island, of which 60 nest there, which is one and a half times more than in other Arctic tundras. The island is home to the largest seabird colonies in the eastern Arctic, located at Cape Uring and a cape aptly named Ptichij Bazaar, Bird Bazaar. In late April, the first arrivals to the coastal cliffs are the Brunich's guillemots. Among all the species of seabirds nesting on the protected islands, they are the most adaptable. They are the first to arrive and the last to leave the coast. Following the guillemots by mid-May, the most numerous inhabitants of the bird bazaars arrive, kittiwakes and black-legged kittiwakes. Kittiwakes prefer broad horizontal ledges devoid of vegetation, where they nest closely packed on bare rocks. Black-legged kittiwakes primarily build their nests on vertical cliffs. Alongside the kittiwakes, cormorants also appear on the cliffs, usually nesting in separate pairs or chains. With the onset of nesting on the cliffs, intense competition arises among neighbors. Everyone wants to occupy the best spots, but not everyone can secure them. сейчас плюс 30 яблоки арбузы рыбка свежая здесь тоже рыбка только кайры ее видят but for the sake of capturing these shots it's worth enduring the cold Sergei was fortunate enough to capture the lavish feast of the polar bears while Sergei is capturing bears here are a few pieces of advice for those who decide to embark on a journey to the Arctic. How not to become a victim of a polar bear. Never let your guard down. Always stay alert and constantly look around. Don't travel alone without an experienced guide, even for short distances. 
Before leaving a building, make sure there are no bears or their tracks nearby. Carefully scan your surroundings. Pay special attention to areas around corners of buildings. It's crucial to spot a bear as early as possible, especially in conditions of limited visibility. Being in places where you might encounter a polar bear while under the influence of alcohol is a high-risk factor for potentially deadly conflicts. When encountering a female bear with cubs of any age, never allow yourself to be between the mother and her cubs. She will react immediately and attack you to protect her offspring. Starving and hungry individuals, such as old bears that have lost their ability to successfully hunt their usual prey, and young bears that have not yet mastered the art of hunting, pose a danger to humans. A polar bear can become aggressive when pursued or unexpectedly confronted by a human. If you spot a bear, try to leave without being noticed or wait until it moves away on its own. Do not approach a polar bear for photography. It's not a slow-moving panda. It's a lightning-fast predator. In today's world, Arctic tours are becoming increasingly popular, and Wrangell Island is no exception. Now, tourists have the opportunity to visit as part of organized groups. However, whether this is beneficial for the island's ecosystem remains a subject of debate. Having spent many years in the north, I've come to realize that the delicate and vulnerable nature of this frozen paradise is undeniable. Even the slightest thoughtless action by humans can cause irreversible damage, something that may never be rectified. So, whether you find yourself beyond the Arctic Circle or deep in the woods near your own home, remember that everything in nature that brings us joy and amazement has the potential to vanish forever.